What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Bar Flight. Today we're gonna to be making a cocktail that I have been trying to do for a long, long time. I mean, not trying in the sense that I couldn't do it, but just I just haven't gotten around to do it and then we're gonna do it and then we haven't done it and then we're gonna do it and we haven't done it. And every week before I shoot, I actually create a document of notes, uh, all the cocktails that I intend to do, kind of like a little short bite on their history. Uh, I tended to do a lot of research for the show and try and get as much of the history as possible, not only correct and accurate, but also, I don't know why I said correct and accurate, they're the same thing. Uh, but I said that to Marius because Marius gave me a look like, you crazy. Anyway, um, not only accurate, but also uh, I try to find history that not everyone knows about. Like I really try to find a bunch of different sources for everything. Um, so I just really, you know, basically this thing has been being copy and pasted into each document over the course of a couple of months uh, because I intend to do it and then we don't get to it and then something happens and blah, 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 blah. That said, it's an important drink to do and it's a really, really great drink to do. And I think that you guys are really gonna get a lot out of it. And I didn't want to do it um, I didn't want to miss the opportunity because, you know, honestly, the summer's almost over. This is definitely a very summery kind of style drink. Now, I'm not going to talk too, too much about the history because we already did a mint julep episode. Just click the info link above to go to there and you will see all of the history that you need to know. But what I will say this about juleps is that early in their history, juleps, which kind of really just resembled a sling, and if you don't know what a sling is, a sling was like the very first sort of mixed drink that we were doing. So in the early days of American distillation, before uh, we actually kind of made an art out of distillation, the spirits that we produced were rough and mean and even somewhat dangerous. And uh, to be able to choke down these rough and mean spirits, we created a thing called a sling, which is basically a little bit of a bittering element, some sugar, some water, uh, you throw the alcohol into that to kind of like sweeten it and spice it to get it down. Um, that is what was called a bittered sling. Uh, it was an iceless drink because at the time that they were created, ice was only for the very rich. It wasn't until probably the 1880s that ice became more widely available. And then we kind of go to the creation of the old fashioned, which is when ice became available and people started putting ice in a bittered sling. That is what basically an old fashioned is. That said, uh, the so early in their history, these drinks that were basically basically just slings were actually taken as medicine. They were kind of considered medicinal, and it wasn't until 1700s uh, America that we started drinking them in a more recreational way. It was about 1805 when mint made its way into this kind of sling, this kind of non-bittered or bittered sling. Uh, I mean, there is not bitters in a um, in a mint julep, but uh, 1805, the mint went in there and it was then called a julep and it has remained a julep ever since. Now, is that true? Is that nomenclature accurate? Who knows? It's really more of a sling than anything else where you've got your sugar and your um, and your alcohol in there and pretty much, and mint, and that's all you got. But at the same time, um, it's become a julep and for better or worse, it has stayed a julep ever since. Now, uh, the cocktail that we're doing today isn't just a regular mint julep, it is called a prescription julep, and it was first published in a cereal that Harper's Monthly ran in 1857 called A, a Christmas in the South, is what it was called. A Christmas in the South, or just Christmas in the South. Um, that's what I got for you on it. Um, it has been published kind of throughout history ever since. It is a wonderful drink. Um, before I do the flavor profiles, I'll just tell you right now that, you know, it's kind of a win-win for everybody. It, 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 it has brandy in it. So you've got like an ounce and a half of brandy, and then you've got an ounce of rye. The brandy sweetens the rye, the rye spices up the brandy, and everybody's very happy. All right, let's get into it before all our crushed ice is melting, because we have a very little amount of crushed ice today. Why is that, Marius? Why do we have a very little amount of crushed ice today? I don't know. Oh, you don't know. Um, so basically, I went to work yesterday, because I had to work, as one does. And I asked Marius to go to the ice company and pick up some pebble ice for us. And he obliged and went to the ice company and everything and picked up uh, the ice and then didn't bring it to set today. So we have no ice until we have just this much little crushed ice. So I planned all crushed ice cocktails as, you know, stirred cocktails aren't really doing that well in this hot weather. And now we're going to have to struggle our way through our day. It's okay. I forget things sometimes too, as we all well know. I all forget right. things too. What did he say? I forget things too. Yes, you do, but not as much as me, but you still do. Uh, I just wanted to make you feel a little bit bad about it, but judging by the smile you have behind the camera, you don't feel bad about it at all. All right, so what I did here is I put uh, about six to eight mint leaves in here, 
And then we're gonna add one. Because I can one. just edit it out. You could edit it out. You're actually, that's right. Marius does our editing and he could edit it out. Thanks for reminding me of that. But if you do edit it out, I'll go on strike. Yeah. Ah! And that wouldn't be our style either. The one take thing. That's true. It wouldn't be our style. Then we would be jump cutting. All right. Put the All right. Sugar cube. So one sugar cube, six to eight mint leaves. Put the sugar cube in there. Then we're going to add one quarter of an ounce of simple syrup. And we're going to add one ounce of rye whiskey. Um, this time I am not using overproof rye because unless you're going to be using overproof brandy or cognac, uh, you don't want the rye to sort of dominate. You just, you want it to balance. So we're just going to do one ounce of just nice overholt 80. And then we're going to do an ounce and a half of, I'm using Argonaut Fat Thumb uh, brandy. And uh, uh, basically brandy is a blanket term for spirits produced with fruit. Uh, and then more specifically, really mostly referred to grape spirits. Uh, that said, if you cannot find American brandy, you can always use a nice VSOP cognac uh, as a replacement and you will be loving your life. So we're doing one ounce and a half of brandy. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a muddler. Now you want to be careful here because you don't want to destroy the mint. You just want to lightly press it. Uh, and you also want to press that sugar cube down. That's why I usually put the mint in first. You want to release the oils from the mint. You don't want to get those vegetable flavors out of it because uh, that would impart a little bit too much bitterness and you don't want. And you don't want it to taste of vegetables. You want it to just taste that ni nice, light kind of mint flavor in it. Uh, and then that's it. Then we're just going to add our pebble ice. And we're just going to add our pebble ice right to the top. Don't use all of it. No, I can't use all of it because if I use all of it, well, our whole day will be done. Uh, and then just like nice at the top, but like below the rim of the cocktail, right? And then you know, the, below the rim of the glass for that matter. And then we're just going to give it like a nice little stir. I like to just kind of rotate the ice around. Just help it mix. You don't want to do it too much because you don't want to dilute it too much. Would this be good with a swizzle stick? You could do it with a swizzle stick as well. I just use a spoon sometimes, but you could use a swizzle stick. For those of you who don't know, I have a swizzle stick handy and I'll show you what it is. It is this nice little swizzle stick. If you want to know the history and what this act, what tree this comes from, you can go to our um, Queen's Park Swizzle episode. Follow the link above. All right, there it is, swizzle stick. Yay, we're gonna put this swizzle stick away. We're gonna finish this cocktail. Then we're gonna do just like another ice capper. And you wanna cap it with ice and get that nice ice mound on top, like though, like so. I said like though. I don't know why I did, but I did. Anyway, like that. And then we're just gonna take some nice, Mint, strip off these. This is interesting mint you got here, Mary. So Mary's went and picked up some mint and it's like very, like it, like what does this look like? I've like, I've never, I mean, it smells like mint. It is definitely mint, but uh, I don't know what variety of mint this is, but it's just like very like, it's very vibrant to this mint. Yeah. And the leaves are very smooth. Yeah. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a little slappy boo. Maybe just a little crush. Crushy pants, crushy McGillicuddy, like that. And you just want to make sure that you release those mint um, oils on the, because we're going to use this for the olfactory sensation. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a straw and we're just going to slip it right down in there. So then when you sip it, you kind of want the straw right next to the mint so that you're, you know, like kind of sipping and, you know, sort of smelling at the same time. And the reason why you do that is because the you will get a more vibrant mint smell. Uh, the Your smell is about 85% of your taste. And so uh, using um, like, or like using citrus oil or using like mint or a different kind of uh, olfactory uh, elements will enhance your cocktails very well. Okay, let's take a sip of it. Oh yeah. So what I love about this too is that you put the quarter ounce of simple syrup in there so that you sweeten it, but you put that sugar cube in there because what you're basically doing is putting sugar on a time release. So as this thing dilutes, that sugar will dissolve more and more, making it sweeter and sweeter as you go. And what happens at the very end when you get a nice sugar pop, your dopamine releases and you become very happy and it leads you to your next cocktail. It's a very ingenious way of adding like a time release of sweetness as you go. So it goes from a little bit stiffer on the front end to a little bit sweeter on the back end. It's really nice. Mm. Just like I said, the brandy sweetens it. 
the rye gives it like a little nice spice. It's like really well balanced. You have that nice sort of like spicy rye kind of on the back of your throat, but then you, you get that like grainy sort of sugar to it and that graininess is sort of dissolving as you go. It's sweeter and sweeter as you go. Mm. Love it. I love his cocktail. I love you. And I love you, Marius, even though you forget some stuff as important as I sometimes. So if you like our channel, please hit like and subscribe and go to Patreon and check out what we're doing there. We've got some awesome exclusive content going there. Patreon.com slash the educated barfly. Uh, I don't know what else I uh, go to Penny Pound Ice and check their stuff out. That's where we get our pebble ice. A lot of people have been asking me where we go to get it. Uh, Penny Pound is pretty awesome. If you're in the Southern California region, you can definitely get ice from them. If you're not, you can always go to Sonic and buy a bag of pebble ice off of them. And if you can't do that, uh, there are probably some ice companies operating in your area. And if there aren't, then you're just going to have to crush it in a Lewis bag. Anyway, I will see you guys on another time.